Welcome everyone, I'm Dr. Ray Gardaki, an orthopedic spine surgeon from Nashville, Tennessee, specializing in minimally invasive and endoscopic spine surgery. Today, I'm excited to take a deep dive into understanding the anatomical orientation through the lens of an endoscope during a transramal approach. We'll explore Kembin's prism at L45 and the surrounding anatomical structures. Just as technology has revolutionized how we navigate our world, it's also revolutionizing the way we understand anatomy. Now a traditional surgeon performing open procedures can use all the exposed landmarks to identify their location. Imagine using a map to navigate a city. If you don't know where you are, you start with a wide overview of the entire city, then zoom into your specific focal point. You can look at cross streets and surrounding buildings to pinpoint a specific intersection. This broad perspective represents how traditional open surgery allows surgeons to see and navigate using a wide field of vision. In contrast, endoscopic surgery requires a different approach and perspective. Think of it as navigating the same city with a map that's permanently zoomed in. In this example, the endoscopic surgeon only has a view of a small section of the curb and needs to understand where they are and what surrounds them using the zoomed in view. During this step, I am looking for a landing spot or home through lateral and AP fluoroscopic imaging. One of the major difficulties surgeons have when transitioning to transframal endoscopic surgery from open midline surgery is orientation. Surgeons understand the anatomy of the spine. They know the relationships between the pedicle, the traversing nerve root, the exiting nerve root, the disc space, and the superarticular process. They're just accustomed to looking at those structures from a posterior midline approach. As soon as they look at these structures through a transferamal approach, they become disoriented. The best way I can convey this concept is with the aid of this visual. Now, when you look at this image, it makes no sense. Why is there a floating rock above a cliff in the background? But once you change the image to a familiar perspective, it all makes sense. The transferamal approach is much like the orientation of this image. The anatomy doesn't change, just the perspective. The traversing root is still medial to the medial wall of the pedicle. The disc is still above the pedicle. The exiting root is still below the cranial pedicle, and the superior articular process still extends out from the top of the pedicle, forming an arch in the foramen. The anatomy and the relationships don't change, only the perspective. Once you become accustomed to this perspective, everything becomes familiar again. So let's take a journey into Kambin's prism as seen through an endoscopic approach to L45. We're all familiar with Kambin's triangle. It's defined by the exiting root, the traversing root, and the end plate of the caudal vertebral body. This outlines the floor of the triangular working zone. However, this region is better described as a three-dimensional space or prism that changes as we change the level we're working. There tends to be significant overhang from the lateral aspect of the superior articular process at L4-5 and L5-S1, enough so that bone removal of the SAP is commonly required to access the lateral recess at these two levels. Bone removal is rarely needed above L4 when there is no underlying foramal stenosis. This is the L5 pedicle, L5 superior articular process, little strip of the L5 vertebral body and end plate. This is the SAP in Wagner's arch. Here is the disc, the floor of the foramen, and the entry into the canal. The traversing nerve root is in here, and the exiting root is up there. When performing transframal spine surgery, it's crucial to ensure that there's enough room for both the instruments and the dorsal root ganglion in the foramen. Too much pressure on the DRG can cause discomfort and potentially lead to radiculitis. This is why I prefer my neuromonitoring for a transframal approach to be an awake patient. If you put excessive pressure on the DRG, the patient will respond. Additionally, when dealing with cranially migrated fragments, we need a slightly different technique, as working more cranially in the foramen increases the risk to the DRG of compression. Now, once you find the pedicle, you know where everything else is. The pedicle is the lighthouse of the spine. From here, the arch, superior articular process, and disc are easily recognizable. This is your home. If you're ever feeling lost, just return to home. As a quick pearl, if you did your approach without making a large fascial defect, 
The soft tissue and bony foramen will hold the scope docked in the foramen in the home location. Now that you understand how to visualize Kanban's prism through an endoscopic transforamal approach at L45, let's discuss different disc pathologies. Here is a typical contained posterolateral herniation that displaces the traversing root dorsally. Looking up at this herniation from the floor of the foramen allows you to visualize the lateral side of the herniation protruding up from the disc space to the SAP. This is a good beginner case. You'll enter the base of the herniation laterally and remove disc material from under the annulus. This will continue until the traversing root drops down to the field of view, pulsates to heartbeat, and is freely mobile. Here is an intraforamal herniation within the foramen. With proper targeting, the scope will land directly upon the herniation, making this another good beginner case. If the herniation is cranially extruded and dorsally displacing the DRG on the exiting root, you must visualize the bony floor of the foramen which is the back of the cranial vertebral body underneath the DRG and exiting root. Far lateral herniations are more technically challenging because you need to turn the scope around 180 degrees and there is no bony architecture to hold the cannula and endoscope in place. This means that you need to control both the depth and rotation of the cannula, the endoscope, and the instrument all at the same time. The DRG often needs to be retracted to expose the herniation, which induces a 20% risk of radiculitis between the root retraction and the reperfusion of the DRG. You must visualize the bony floor of the foramen, which is the back of the cranial vertebral body underneath the DRG and exiting root to ensure an adequate decompression. The endoscopic approach offers easy and direct access to most pathologies through an eight millimeter incision, minimizing disruption to the muscles and other soft tissues. This technique results in reduced blood loss, less muscle disruption, faster healing, and allows for a quicker return to work and normal activities. And there's no need for post-operative narcotics. Now that you have a comprehensive understanding of visualizing Kanban's prism through an endoscopic transforamal approach at L4 or 5, as well as the anatomic nuances and techniques for different herniation locations, you're better equipped to enhance your surgical precision and patient outcomes. Thank you.